So in the record books, they made me the father of American kickboxing. I actually won seven different world titles, but I only claim one. Once you're a world champion, what difference does it make whether you're the 20-time world champion or a one-time world champion? I am proud of this fact. I'm, I was the first martial artist in the world to win a world championship in two different sports. I won a world title in karate and also kickboxing. Now I won seven different titles. Some of them were amateur titles, some of them were professional titles. Some of them were uh, no, no holes bar like you could throw elbows. I was never knocked down in my life, so I'm kind of proud of that. In 68, early 68, I was doing a nightclub act with myself, Bob Wall. He, Bob Wall was the co-star of that film, End of the Dragon. And Mike Stone, we were kind of like buddies at that time. As a matter of fact, Bob and I were living together. We were business partners. At the end of each nightclub, at Mike Stone and I would do a little demonstration karate match. And then I noticed his style had changed. And he started telling me he was working out with this Chinese guy named Bruce Lee. And he said, uh, Bruce Lee wants to work with you. You should go down and start taking lessons with him, private lessons with him. So eventually I took his advice and uh, Bruce Lee and I got in contact with each other. And once a week, I would go there and take a pride with Bruce and spend the whole rest of the week working on what he would show me. And it actually, in a great way, improved my fighting style. I'd say his main quality was uh, his charm. He could charm anybody. Uh, here's, here's a tip look this up. I, every day I'd walk into his house, first thing he had to do was <clears throat> chill. He always had to show some part of his body he's working on. I remember one day, he picks up a 75 pound barbell. He locks down in position, in standing position, starts on his chest, and he sticks it straight out like this, slow motion. It holds it, sustains it. Try it. Try it with half that weight. And then you know what 75 pounds feels like. And I know guys who can, uh, bench press 500 pounds, they can get it out, but they can't hold it, they'll go like this. Ah, and as soon as it gets out, they fall. Uh, so he's, he was pretty strong. He was a great artist, and he's very fast. He could sketch out something real fast. I remember him drawing a leopard. He was going to do this role called Silent Flute, the Silophant, and he were doing together. And one of the parts, he was going to play a, the leopard man. A leopard man does movements like a leopard. So for example, if I'm going to throw a strike like a snake, I'll make a hand like a snake, and I'll move it like a snake, see? Now if it's gonna be like a, uh, a crane, I'll make a move it like a crane, and I'll strike the Adam's apple, you know, the brachial plexus, or I'll strike the eyeball, see? Now if I'm gonna move like a leopard, see, leopards have claws, okay? And a bear has a certain claw, a, Tiger has another type of a claw, you follow me? So a bear would hook the wrist in this way, whereas a tiger would keep the claw straight and then rip inside out. You ever watch a lion going underneath a buffalo or something? They grab the belly this way and rip it open, you see? Bruce would talk to me about those kinds of things. Now, although I was already an amateur uh, world champion and a two-time national champion before I started work with Bruce, I think he helped accelerate my career helped me defeat all the top guys in competition at that time. After he trained with the Little Dragon, Joe went on to win an unheard of 11 consecutive grand championships. For a guy who only weighed 138 pounds, and he weighed less than that when he passed away, he hit extremely hard. He could hit as hard as a heavyweight. He had real fast uh, twitch muscle fibers, something he's born with. He trained hard. He worked on a lot of his stabilizers and muscles, and especially his speed. I always thought he was like the fastest guy who ever stood in front of me. He had incredible, what I call kind of a Zen level of consciousness in psychology. We call it the implicit level of consciousness. You didn't know when he was going to squeeze that trigger, and he always knew when you weren't ready. He had blinding speed, especially with his hands. 
And I know that's because he stood in front of me and he popped me a few times. So I've always told people, I know how hard Bruce Lee could hit. I know how fast he was because he nailed me. And uh, I've always told people, I know what real Jeet Kune Do was <laughs> because I got popped with it. I considered him by far the greatest. And for those who don't consider him the greatest, at least he would be the top candidate for being he who would actually be the greatest.